Oh, I'm ready. It's time for new. New, 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 new. Okay. New, new, um, new, 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 new. <laughs> I know there's a little song. Yeah, there is. The, but the first round of products, I just put in like a slideshow thing because I yeah. didn't think it made sense to do anything more. So it's just going to flip through this. What is okay. this? Okay. So we basically, uh, we've had a, a, like three different colors of solid core wire. And um, after a while, I was just like, I, I actually got tired of not having wire that I wanted to have when I was watching. Cause like I bought some a long time ago, but I finally went through it. And so I was like, oh, we should really stock all the different colors. So now we have 22 American wire gauge, which is kind of the standard wire gauge for solid core for breadboarding, or actually for breadboarding, as well as stranded core in case you want to uh, make wire harnesses that are, are not as fancy as silicone wire, but you still want more, more flexibility than solid core. Um, and we have them all 10 colors, uh, black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. So all 10 colors, these are the standard uh, electronics colors. Um, stranded and solid core. So maybe you want to show these on the overhead real fast? Yeah, let's go to the overhead. I'll just show two colors. And they come in um, nice little spools, um, and they're fairly pretty intense spools. I'm kind of surprised, but this is what the manufacturer suggests. And um, this is solid core, so yeah, it works really great with breadboarding and it holds its shape and it's just nice and fancy and this is the violet and then stranded core so it's got looks like about 16 strands of um, wire and it's more flexible and it holds its shape a teeny bit but not really like it's, it's really meant for a flexible wiring needs and of course we have the silicone wire as well um, the silicone wire is a lot more flexible, but it's a lot more expensive as well. So, you know, depending on what your needs are, you may want one or the other. Okay, and then tonight, the stars of the show besides you is the following. Um, we've got an exciting new feather. Yay, two feathers, exciting new feathers. Yeah, feathers. Uh, it's, it's twinsy feather time, brother and sister, or maybe it's two sisters. We have the non-latching relay feather wing and then the latching relay feather wing. Yeah. And these are two mini relays. They're not going to turn on and off your fridge. They're for 60 watts or less of power. And check out the data sheet for the derating and, and you know what current requirements you have. But for a lot of stuff, like maybe you want to switch um, solenoids that use AC power, or you're controlling like a doorbell ringer or like a small motor or a small um, appliance. Or a Actually, a lot of stuff is pretty low power these days. If you, you, know, if you want to turn on and off your DVR, um, or your Wi-Fi um, router that will probably be under 60 watts. So this is that's a perfectly fine uh, use of this relay wing. And there's and there's two, but I, there it, there's latching and there's non-latching. Non-latching. Can you spot the difference? Sort of? Well, they're they're yeah. a little bit different. I'll yeah. explain the difference um, because I, I personally really like latching relays, but you know they're a little bit more complicated to use. So a non-latching relay is what most people think of when they think of a relay, and that's this one. So you have a single pin, the signal pin, and it's connected through a transistor and a diode, so you don't have to worry about like level, you know, like can you drive enough current from a pin? You can use any zero to three volt logic level. And when the relay is normally um, open, the NO pin is normally open, and then the NC pin is normally closed to the common. And then when the signal pin is brought high, the red LED turns on and the, um, the normally open closes and the normally closed open. So that the switch flips from the other one to the other. And when the signal is released, it goes back. Okay. So it's, it's basically, you, you have to keep the pin high to keep the relay contacts closed. So I actually have a demo of that here. You're going to do a live demo. I'm going to do a live All demo. Right. So I've got this lamp, which I will hold up. Yeah. So this is my this. lamp. Lamp. Maybe I'll just have it over here. OK. Yeah, that's what that, ooh, that's where you can tell. Yeah, let's that way you can tell. Thing. All right. And then over here, I've got my um, ESP uh, feather. So I've got a Wi-Fi feather. And I have it, um, I just have it plugged into uh, USB just so I know it would run for the entirety of the show. And then what I did is I took a, um, a uh, an extension cord, one of these like low cost extension cords, and I cut it in half and spliced it into the common and the normally open. So it's connected to normally open and common. So that means by default the um, lamp is off. And then um, the, hold on, let me just 
I don't want the reflection. Um, I have my tablet here. You can use a phone or a computer or anything. This is just a demo. And this is connected to Adafruit IO. So I'm logged into my IO account. And I have an on-off button. And right now it's off. And when I hit the button, Whoa. it turns on. And as you can see here, you see that red LED. That means the relay is activated. And then, of course, the lamp is on. And then if I hit off. That's pretty fast. Yeah, MQTT is really fast. I mean, that's like what's so good about MQTT. So MQTT is sent for, man, quick time, Tom. I don't know. It's very fast. Um, so you can turn it on and off. And as the relay turns on, you see the red LED Sorry, flicks. The hardest part is actually just pressing the capacitive touch screen. Um, it turns the relay on and off. And so if I, if I turn this on, for example, and then I, um, I'll just unplug the relay, it will um, automatically turn off. That's smart. Be because by default, it's off. Yeah. So that's why you would want a normal relay. Um, okay. And then the other type is the latching relay. And, and I actually didn't set up a demo for and it. Can these stack because they're feathers? Um, you, how, how, how would this, um, this interact with another feather, for instance? Well, yeah, you could, and this is a little tall. I actually have to measure because I think you can stack on top of it, but you can't have too much height um, if you use the stacking feather wings. Or you can go side by side with the doubler, um, and you can have two relays or two wings that way. Yeah, it's a side-by-side -side Over, under. Over, under, Through the whatever. side, whatever, just whatever um, feather. But yeah, you could use this with Bluetooth or, or Wi-Fi. I'm just using it with Wi-Fi, but you can use it with whatever Bluetooth feather wing. <coughs> you know, art, radio, whatever. These people like Wi-Fi. You don't even have to have it connected to the internet. Just happen to like it. Okay. But then we have the latching relay. So I just showed you the non-latching. It's a standard relay. You pull the pin high, the relay closes, and then when you release the signal, it opens. So can you go to the um, latching? Latching is this one. Yeah. So the latching, oh, can you go to the one that's straight on? You want to straight on? Yeah, the okay. next photo. Okay, so the latching relay feather wing, you see it has two pins, set and unset. So instead of having a single pin, it actually has two pins. And the reason it has two pins is unlike the, um, you should you want to put me like in the relay? I'm gonna put you in the relay. Okay. Uh, whoops. Okay, sweet. Um, so unlike the um, normal uh, relay feather wing where you have to have the, hi, I'm inside, really? click, clack, click, clack. Instead of having the set, uh, having the pin high and the relay closes and then when it's released, it's open because every time you have the relay coil activated, it's drawing 50 milliamps. That coil takes a lot of current to keep on. The latching relay, what you do is you just pulse the pin high for 10 milliseconds. So you turn set high for 10 milliseconds and you can drop it low and then it will click on and there's a little plastic piece that latches it in place. So whatever you set it to, it'll stay that way even if power is lost, even if you don't have the coil activated so you can set and unset. And that's good when you are running on battery power so you want to have a lot less um, current drop. You don't want to have to hold the relay open. And if you don't care, if you want it so when power is lost, it can um, stay in the last state. Like for safety, you might want like a relay feather wing connected to um, a lamp or a heater. You might want it if the power is lost or it loses connection with Wi-Fi to automatically turn off. That's something that's a little easier to do with a normal relay um, than with a latching relay. But it, it depends on what you want to do. And again, with a latching relay, you need two pins, one for setting and one for unsetting. You have to alternate them to turn it on and off. Okay. And can you, uh, let's go to the overhead. Can you go over what, because uh, a couple questions came up. Can you go, what is this setup right here? Okay, like, sure. What's underneath? Watch out, be careful. Don't, don't. I, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, I don't feel pain like others. Yeah. Um, so uh, what, what is this setup here? Sure. Oh. Um, so underneath here, I will carefully yeah, you... remove this. Oh. So I've got a um, ESP8266. So what, what type of feather, feather. is that? Feather. So it's a it? Wi-Fi feather. Is it a huzzah? What is yeah, the name of it? Yeah, it's feather huzzah. It's a feather huzzah, okay. It's feather huzzah ESP266. And I just plugged it in so it's, it'll connect to, connect to the internet right now. Okay. And so this is connected to Adafruit IO over Wi-Fi. It's connected to the Wi-Fi network. You can use this with the Fona or the Bluetooth. Wi-Fi is the easiest one okay. for me to use. And then um, like any other feather wings, this just plugs in on top. Okay. And um, the last setting we had was on, so it's, it's 
by you know when it, we connect to 84 IO, it'll it'll, it'll get that, it that previous setting okay. and yeah, it's the retained value. Um, but then I can connect to Adafruit IO via my tablet. So when I press this button on the website, this is on I'm connected to Adafruit IO's website. When I connect this, um, it's sending the signal to Adafruit IO, and then this connects to Adafruit IO, and then the message gets exchanged. So it does it pretty fast. It, so it looks like it's instantaneous, but it's actually relaying a Wi-Fi message back and forth. Yeah. But you That's can cool. use cellular, Bluetooth. Radio, you know, whatever you want, Zigbee. Um, we're going to have all sorts of different Wi-Fi, uh, wireless feather capabilities. Some of which we might be talking about soon, as it's not out yet. But this really is just—it's just you know, use one pin and you can use it to control power, however you like. Yeah. Okay. Whether over the internet or if you want uh, some other system, it's it's up to you, however you want to do it. All right. And with that, those new products. Yay.